Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Breaking into the tomb of Elizabeth of York. One of the forgotten Tudor queens was the very first, Elizabeth of York, who married King Henry VII. Their marriage united the House of York and the House of Lancaster, and in effect brought an end to the Wars of the Roses. The first Tudor royal couple would have seven children together, and they had a very happy marriage. Elizabeth did not involve herself in matters of the state and seemed to have little interest in 15th and 16th century politics. But Elizabeth was a princess in her own right, being the daughter of Edward IV of England, but at the age of 37, inside the walls of the Tower of London, Elizabeth of York tragically passed away. Her death left her husband distraught and devastated, and she was buried inside of Westminster Abbey. But the first Tudor Queen's remains were disinterred and were disturbed a number of times throughout the centuries, including in one man's quest to find another King of England. But what is the story of the times that Elizabeth of York's tomb were broken into? As Queen of England, Elizabeth was involved in the education of her younger children, including the future King Henry VIII. In November of 1501, her eldest son Arthur married Catherine of Aragon, and the pair were living at Ludlow Castle, but tragedy struck as Arthur would die following an illness that also affected Catherine of Aragon, who would later go on to marry Henry VIII, Arthur's brother. Elizabeth of York was devastated by the loss of her eldest son, and Henry VII was also heartbroken, as his heir was no more, and Elizabeth comforted her husband, saying that he still had a son and two daughters, and she reminded the king that they were still young enough to have more children, but Elizabeth in private broke down and grieved. However, in 1502, she became pregnant yet again, and she would enter her confinement period inside the Tower of London. This was standard for prominent Tudor women, to spend the final parts of their pregnancy in solitary confinement, away from the eyes of their husbands, and they were attended on by their ladies. Her chamber at the tower was richly decorated with symbols of fertility, and on the 2nd of February 1503, she gave birth to a daughter named Catherine. However, tragedy would strike, as the child would die a few days later, but on the 15th of February 1503, Elizabeth of York died. She never recovered from childbirth, and it's believed that she suffered from childbed fever or a postpartum infection. She died on her 37th birthday, and her death devastated her husband, Henry VII. It was said that her death broke the heart and shattered Henry VII, and another account said that Henry privily departed to a solitary place, and would no man should resort unto him, and he could not be summoned from his rooms. Henry became ill also shortly after, and he would be cared for by his mother. Henry wasn't a man who usually showed his emotions, and it was unusual for this outburst of emotion. But in just over two years, he had lost a baby daughter, his oldest son, and his beloved wife. Elizabeth of York had a huge funeral, and the king ordered two members of the council to arrange the proceedings. The bells of St Paul's rang out to mark her death, and Elizabeth of York's body had been washed and dressed in her estate robes and was laid out on her bed. Her body was then embalmed by a sergeant of the chowdery. He was given many ailments to do the job, including pounds of wax, wine, spices and cerecloth. Elizabeth's body was washed in wine and rose water and rubbed with balm and perfumed spices. Her body was then wrapped in cerecloth, which had been dipped in molten wax, and the king's plumber was the one who enclosed the body in lead, and he marked it with a lead epitaph saying who she was. The lead case of Elizabeth's was then enclosed in a coffin made from hollywood, and the coffin was covered in black velvet and a cross of white damsk. The large funeral procession took her remains to Westminster Abbey, where it was then met by eight bishops. Her coffin and effigy were placed on a hearse and were held inside of the abbey for the night and then her burial took place. Mass was said, and then her remains were interred inside of the abbey. The grave of Elizabeth of York was not its final resting place. Her chamberlain and gentleman ushers broke their staves of office and threw them into her grave. But at the time, the lady chapel which was being worked on by her husband was not yet finished, 
and because of this, Elizabeth of York was buried in a vault specially made for her in the crossing of the abbey, between the high altar and the choir. However, following the death of her husband, Henry VII, Elizabeth of York's remains were disturbed for the first time. The Lady Chapel had been finished, and Elizabeth's body inside of the coffin was taken from the vault where it had been laid to rest. It was then interred in a magnificent tomb alongside her husband, and it was decorated in, in incredible riches. However, centuries after her death, her tomb and the tomb of Henry VII would be shockingly broken into by a curious Dean of Westminster, who had permission from Queen Victoria to investigate the royal burials inside of Westminster Abbey. One of the biggest questions that Dean Stanley was looking to investigate was where was the Stuart King, James I, who succeeded the throne after Elizabeth I. However, he tried looking at the heart of the Lady Chapel for James, and with this he would break into the burial vault of Elizabeth of York. Immediately, the workmen had found that to the west of the monument to Henry VII and Elizabeth, the burial vault containing Elizabeth and Henry had been broken into before. It had been disturbed and was loose and filled with bricks. The workmen tried to clear the debris, and they removed further stone, and with this they had broken into the tomb of Elizabeth of York and Henry VII. Arthur Stanley said, It was with a feeling of breathless anxiety, amounting to solemn awe, which caused the humblest of workmen employed to whisper in bated breath, as the small opening at the apex of the arch admitted the first glimpse into the mysterious secret which had hereto eluded this long search. When they introduced a light, they could see that the inside of the vault of Elizabeth of York, there were two coffins alongside the Tudor Queen. This was where Henry VII obviously was, but also where James I had been interred. When James was buried in this vault, Elizabeth's coffin would have been moved and was tampered with in order to get James I into the vault at the heart of Westminster Abbey. Stanley said that when he entered the vault, he was struck by a deadly chill, and when he examined Elizabeth's coffin, he noticed that hers, along with her husband's, were lead. The wooden casing of the two Tudor burials had been taken away and broken off to make space. Elizabeth's coffin had been shuffled over and was in the centre, so she lost the outer casing of her coffin to make way for a Stuart monarch. However, the people who had done this had left their mark. Etched into the lead of the vault was the name John Ware and the initials EC and the date 1645. This showed who interred James I into the vault and the date that they did this. But why James I wanted to be buried with the founders of the Tudor dynasty remains a mystery, but what this meant was that Elizabeth of York's remains were disturbed yet again to make space for James. But Elizabeth's final years were considered a rather tragic and sad one, and her death had a huge impact on her husband. She is remembered for being the first Tudor queen, and her remains after her death were moved a number of times. She was not treated in a way like Catherine of Valois, whose remains were left unburied for 400 years, but it is a shame that she could not have just been left inside of her tomb, away from the eyes of the inquisitive people centuries after her death. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.